Hello, YouTube. You know, it's very funny. On Tuesday this week, we got a little bit of a teaser of the Diabormon WinCon and what it would be all about, kind of. And I was like, hopefully we get more information soon. Well, soon is here. Because at 7 a.m. approximately, I was asleep. But everything was revealed for the WinCon. Everything was revealed. And it's all in this card right here, the clock of the end. So we're going to talk about what this is. We're going to talk about the win con, and we're going to talk about how viable it actually is, or if this thing is a, a bit more of a meme. That's what we're here to discover. If you guys like or don't like it, let me know in the comments and explain why. Why do you think this is hype or not hype or whatever? Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. I'm really curious. Because this is the first time we've had an actual diet, like alternate win con, and it's really interesting. It's, it's not about getting X Diabormon tokens on the field, but it is about getting Diabormon tokens on the field. I'll show you what I mean here. So Clock in the End is a three-cost option. Um, the main effect is you play one Diabormon without paying the cost. Well, five, sorry, first of all, security adds this to your hand. Okay, whatever. Main, play one Diabormon token without paying the cost. So for three-cost option, just main effect plays a Diabormon token. Then place this card as the bottom Digivolution card of one of your Diabormon without Clock of the End in its Digivolution cards. Start of your turn, if four Clock of the Ends are placed in the battle area, you win the game. So it's not so much like a um, Final Countdown. It is like Final Countdown, but I'd argue it's a little more like Destiny Board in Yu-Gi-Oh. If you guys don't know, uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh, there are the Destiny board cards that, if you have them out, you kind of win the game. I'll show you here. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Destiny board. Yeah, this stuff. Destiny board cards. One, this, and all four sphere message cards that their names are placed on the field. You win the duel. Once per turn, place during your end points on face, place one spirit message from your hand or deck in the spell trap zone face up in the order of I N A L. When any spirit message destiny board you control leaves the field, send all spirit message cards and destiny boards to the graveyard. So not that big of a fallback, obviously, but this is the same general gimmick, right? Place a place a destiny board piece on the board. Now, it's not that good. It's not that good, kind of. Inherited effect. All turns when this Digimon would leave the battle area by an opponent's effect, by deleting one of your other Diaboromon, prevent it from leaving. So, this is interesting, right? You can delete another one of your Diaboromons to prevent the removal of your clock of the end, which is good. It keeps it around for a while. It also is going to promote you making Diaboromon tokens, which is important. Which is like why I said at the beginning of the video, kind of, about Diabormon tokens. Because if you don't have Diabormon tokens, they do go to the trash. Now, if it goes to the trash, is it the end of the world? We'll find out in a second. Now let's talk about the other effects. If end of one's turn, place one clock of the end from this Digimon and Digivolution card in the battle area. So how it works is at the end of one's turn, you have this as an inheritable underwater Diabormon. The clock goes into your battle area, and it's your turn. Main effect, make a Diabormon token, stick it underneath a Diabormon. That's how the clock works. So, theory, it just keeps making Diabormon tokens, you know, every turn, right? Let's talk about this Diabormon for a second. This Diabormon is a four-cost mega, black, not white, which is really, really cool. Its abilities, when dead evolving, placing a clock at the end from your hand or trash. As the bottom of this Digivolution's card, you may play two Diabormon tokens. Also, an opponent's turn effect when one of your opponent's Digimon attacks. Once per turn, you may switch his attack target to one of your Digimon Diabormon name. Whatever. Okay. So, if your Clock of the Ends do end up in the trash, because, you know, if they did, like, there'd be no way to win the game, this Diabormon can actually just bring them back for you. So, that's pretty cool. It's not the end of the world if you can't make enough Diabormon tokens and your Clock of the End goes to the discard pile. Plus, Diabormon immediately sticks it underneath it. So it would essentially count to your start of the clock of the end total. So, I think this win con is balanced. I don't think it's broken. 
I think it's going to be interesting trying to get it out. Why? Because there's no way to search it, right? Unless we get like a Caramon or something like that, that searches Clock of the End from your top X cards or deck or whatever, there's no real way to search this except with defense training, which is the black training, if I have my names wrong. The black training can reveal top two and add this to your hand, but no other card can add this to your hand from the deck right now. So it's going to make it so it's not super consistent because you have to like actually draw into them. And if from the bottom of the deck, well, then that's just unfortunate. And if you take away the clock of the end gimmick, the Diabormon cards themselves, they don't really do much. Like they're cool, but are, is it a tier? Is the Diabormon stuff that we're seeing a tier one threat without the clock? Oh, my alarm, my alarm's off. Time to wake up. Uh, no. It really doesn't. Which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, we got an Inframon review. By the way, by the way, this we got, we got all the Demon Lords revealed. Um, we have all of the, like, a whole shit ton of BT-17 EX6 stuff revealed here. Uh, so this morning was really, 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 really good for reveals. But, um, that's not what this video is about. You should check the Demon Lord stuff and the BT-17A stuff, because it will definitely impact the market. And, uh, you know, I'm a Mark Watch guy. I'll be doing that literally as soon as this video is done recording. So, going to die warm on here. Besides the training, what I was growing up here for was for the Inframon, right? This Inframon EX6 deletes something die warm on to, like, evolve into die warm on. Inheritable effect when another die warm on is played once per turn. Did you need to draw void from such one? Like, it's reasonable stuff, but it's not tier one meta defining stuff without the clock. So if we have no way to consistently get the clock, then Diabormon would probably be at most a tier 2 fun deck. But you never know. BT-17 reveals are not over yet, obviously. <laughs> it just started, really. And you might have the option to search clock of the end with something in the set besides the black training card. We just don't know yet. So that's my opinion on the new Diabormon win con. Uh, luckily, it's not something that everyone will play because it's not honestly that good it, it, it's fine it's a reasonable win con but it's not quicker than like turn three blue flare otk or turn three war gray otk or whatever you know what i mean like it's it's slow it's nothing too crazy um it's it's okay i'm happy that it's not broken because we're not going to see this everywhere and this card's hard to interact with if you have multiple Diamond One tokens on the field. So, not too bad. What do you guys think about Clock of the End? Seriously, let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys later. Bye!